Aspect Ratio, the The photography and video podcast. Hello and welcome to the Aspect Ratio podcast. This episode is slightly different in that I'm actually not going to be doing any interviewing or any chatting, but I'm going to hand over to the effervescent Simeon Quarry, who back at the photo show hosted a really interesting discussion with three very talented female videographers, uh, some of which were also photographers. He was chatting to them about how important audio is in their productions. The panel was Victoria Grech, Emma Wilson and Sarah Seal, all from very different disciplines. They have some great information for you about how to use audio, how important audio is to use in your productions and also some tips and tricks as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Simeon, who uh, was recorded. It was live on stage, so obviously uh, forgive the audio in certain places, but we did the best we could. Um, I'll be back at the end and uh, enjoy the show. All right, we are we are live. We're up and running. Welcome. I hope you're enjoying the uh, photography show so far. Yeah, excellent. Uh, of course, most people come to the photography show, we're thinking about the, the visual, right? We're thinking about the image, whether it be still or whether it be moving. But the thing that we often forget about uh, focusing on uh, is sound. So we've got a great panel here for you uh, today. Um, and it's going to be really a bit of a, a discussion. So let's get this discussion started. Um, I'm going to welcome on board our fantastic uh, panel. We've got Sarah Steele. Give her a, a round of applause. Come on up. Okay. <laughs> Sarah Seal, Victoria Gretsch, and we've also got Emma Wilson. How important do you kind of class audio to be when you are considering audio and video kind of on the, on the timeline and in the edit? So I think that if you've got um, video without the audio, you can do montages, but if you've got just audio and you don't have the video side, then you, it, you're technically just like radio, podcasts, and, but obviously that's still great. Yes. But, um, I do video, so I need 50-50. So that 50-50 is almost like when you think about the editing timeline, you've got one half is the, the visual and the other half is the audio for yourself. Well, following on from what Sarah just said, I mean, I think that audio is extremely powerful and our imaginations are extremely powerful. And, um, you know, I started in radio and um, I listen to The Archers every night with my son and we argue about what the characters are like. He's only 11, by the way. And I, I think it's, I think audio is, I think we can fill in the blanks with our imagination, but we can't, it's harder to fill in the blanks with, with audio. So when I finished an edit and I finished my video edit, um, actually, I've obviously used a lot of the audio to get to the point where I'm at, but I am nowhere near finished when I get to the audio edit. It's still, it's, it's a massive deal for me to get that right, because that's what's going to make your film stand out from, it, from other people. How do you use sound? Um, you know, so a bit of background in terms of maybe what, what, what types of sound and audio do you use in, inside your productions? So for wedding films, um, I used to not really care about the ambient sound at all, but now all my films will start with ambient sounds and throughout the film there'll be ambient sound because that's what draws in the viewer. That's, you know, I don't just do music montages. Um, it's really, really crucial that we um, make sure that we capture the audio from the speeches and the ceremony because it's, that, it's those sound bites that you need uh, in order to help tell a story. Um, but the ambient audio, audio can also lead a story What do you too. mean by ambient? Ambient, I mean, it's the background noise, the layering, the layering of, um, of audio throughout, throughout the film. So, for instance, uh, birds singing. I mean, that's a so really like cliched... Foley audio. You know, that's, that's very cliched. But, um, and I draw, I draw an audience in. So, if, let's say I'm filming outside a church. My ambient audio, I, I might even start with a bit of ambient audio. Then you might hear the priest starting a sermon quite quietly. But then when we enter the church, then the audio picks up. I, I literally take my audience step by step by step into the room, as it would appear when we walk into a room, um, you know, and listen with our ears naturally. Nice. I would probably say what you're touching on there is that the one thing I learned from the short film was uh, I was too creative on the visual. Again, even though we filmed loads of audio or captured loads of audio, when we got to the edit, it was like, oh. Someone said to me, well, when the dog goes past the bush, there's a noise. I'm like, what? Really? We didn't capture that. So we had to build what I call a lot of Foley audio. And that's when I become almost addicted to audio. I was just like, oh, this is cool. We can make noises doing this and this. Um, So one of the things is also ambient. 
the first thing I do is film at least maybe five minutes of just noise, like, or, like the noise here. Because then if whoever I'm interviewing, if they mess up and I need to stop it, I've got something that I can blend it back in or I could get a voiceover, worst case scenario, because we do make mistakes, um, that just record a good five minutes or even a couple of minutes of just the actual noise in the room. Nice. Yeah, I also agree with that. And it's also really important to see the sound. So if you're doing an interview, a vox pop, and you've got background noise, turn them around and get the background noise, get, film the people in the background, because otherwise it's too distracting. But if you can see um, the sound, such as a car goes past while you're doing an interview, just get a bit of B-roll from in the street. Get some, get some nice B-roll of what you can visually like, That's oh, so true. I'm trying to, I'm trying to word it. She says so true. Be roll for audio. Yeah, we've very done good something and kept it so clean, but you can see stuff going on in the backgrounds and you can't hear it, and it just feels weird yeah, watching yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. Totally agree. I've learned from that mistake. I mean, <laughs> Me when, too. I, when, I in, when I walk into any room, if, if before I choose the location for where I'm going to be filming, the first thing I do is listen. You know, I use my ears and I listen, and, and all the way throughout the day filming a wedding, I'm always listening because. You, otherwise, you might miss something that you can use later on, and, and that's so it's just really crucial to know your surroundings. And, and also, um, if you hear something like an air conditioning unit and you're in a controlled environment and you can do something about it, switch it off. If you can switch it off, get it switched off because otherwise, it's just gonna, it's gonna really annoy you when you get back into the edit. So, very quick dis um, things that you look for that are kind of audio hazards. So when you're going into maybe filming in a corporate environment or an, or an office or filming somewhere, what are the things that you, you kind of, you're looking out for, listening out for? I'll listen, but what I normally do is clap. Yeah. I walk around like a crazy woman clapping because I remember a wedding that we had to film speeches under a dome and they sounded like a goldfish. So what I soon yeah. <laughs> learn was to clap. Walk around and clap and the damp and the sound, or I'll bring, I think we spoke yesterday about sound cloths, or I'll bring cushions and things on the floor and tiles just to soak up the sound. So you're trying to listen for echo, because that yeah. can be something that can And drone really noises, destroy. that kind of thing. Drone noises? So. I generally look at things that might go wrong. So if I'm doing filming a conference and there's a sound desk and I'm plugging in straight to the camera, that the technicians know exactly what they're doing. We don't mean you. And yeah, <laughs> you guys. We love you. Um, but no, but recently I had no that issue and like the technicians up. left and they were like, oh, yeah, I called them up because I made sure I got their number before they left. I was like, you're, you're leaving? You're actually leaving? And I called them up um, because we couldn't hear any sound through the camera. And they were like, oh, you, can, you know what you're doing. You can, you can do that. And I'm like, it's like a massive sound desk yeah. with all these buttons. I was like... This is awful. I would say what Sarah says is bang on as well because I've had in a wedding situation we pulled a feed from the desk and then for some reason you leave it and then someone's gone and pushed it up too far and we've lost the whole audio. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how many of you are shooting with mobile phones? Others then are using cameras, right? So, when you um, are looking at your devices, uh, onboard audio? No. Microphone, okay. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> yeah. no. I didn't hear what you said, sorry. I just went on board. <laughs> on board. No, on board internal audio. mic. Fans of internal, are you, are you fans of the internal mic? Oh, oh. Um, See that reaction? Yeah, that reaction. Oh, oh. Well, it, 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 well, Explain. Well. <laughs> it depends sort of what camera you're using. Mm. Um, I Like with the Canon, the preamps aren't very good. Yep. So if you're plugging straight into a Canon camera, um, you generally... Uh, want to turn the volume up in your actual microphone and um, turn it down in your camera. But with Sony cameras, I think they're very reliable. Sorry, you're yeah. very Canon. But, no, no, um, but I've used a pro camera, so if I don't have I, a problem. But you know when it's the internal microphone? Yeah. Oh. I mean, for me, the size of the internal microphones on any DSLR, like a little diddy dot. Um, yeah. To be fair, I've recorded stuff on a smartphone, but I'm using great connectors with great audio. That's the only reason I started filming on a smartphone is because now I have the option to get broadcast quality sound. Yeah. But generally, I never have. I have actually never used like a, a mini video mic either. I've had them, I've bought them, but for what I did, I didn't use them because if they're not in someone's face like this, yeah. then it kind of didn't work for the stuff I was doing. So I'd say I've always had external. So can we just explain that principle? Because we're just saying that using an internal microphone on a camera isn't great, but what's the principle that helps 
you know, what's the reason Sinking. behind getting yeah. really good quality get sound in the, the placement? Get near to the audio source. Yeah, yeah. you okay. need to get n near to the, uh, the audio source. But also, for, for me, I wouldn't use an internal mic. Uh, and I mean, obviously, I, I might on my phone if I'm just doing an Insta story or something. But, you know, all, I'm always going to use um, an external mic. But I came from video cameras. So for me, it was quite uncomfortable because um, I would record internally into the camera. Obviously, not obviously with microphones and radio mics etc but internally I would record it so it was already synced up and I could monitor it so when I moved over to DSLR cameras um, that was my fear that was my the horrible thing that in a live event in a situation that I, suddenly I wouldn't be monitoring that audio um, and uh, and then I'd also have the pain of syncing up syncing it up afterwards but you know there's pros and cons of all the cameras you use and, and for, for me now I'm so used to that that it's just part of the workflow so it doesn't matter but I'm always going to record externally. So the basic principle that was mentioned there is that the quality of sound is really important. The way you increase that is by getting the microphone as close to the audio that you're trying to record. So if you are recording with a mobile phone or a camera but the person that's speaking is a long way away of course the quality is going to be bad because all of the other sound that's coming to the camera or the microphone in the distance is just going to be a really bad quality. Yeah. So then to counteract that... Um, I think even sim, just a quick one, so like propagation of sound. So as photographers or filmmakers, or particularly photographers, we always go into a room and read the light yes. and look for the light. We wouldn't shoot in rubbish light. And we'd be looking where the light is bouncing because the light travels. Sound travels too. So it's also looking like, how do you stop that sound traveling? So I think even yesterday you were saying, if you didn't have a mic and you had to use the camera, whatever the rubbish was on the camera for audio, then controlling the environment. Yes. So like making sure it doesn't bounce. Like here is awful. Like this audio is going, it's harder to hear even up here. And then it sounds like there's a bit of a reverb where you are. There is no reverb on this. It's just the way it's bouncing everywhere. So I think that's the other thing is getting more kind of creative with what you've got. But sometimes you're in a situation and it's very difficult. I did a wedding in Paris and it was at the American church and it was a really, there was real echo. There was nothing much I could do about it. The, and the groom's audio on his, um, on his personal mic was absolutely fantastic. But I would never mic up a bride. Um, and she stood quite close to, close to him. Um, and I thought, you know, in normal situations, that microphone is perfectly good perfectly good in fact it's really good that or the celebrant but in this situation the audio her audio was so echoey she sounded like she was in a toilet so when it came to making the trailer I actually for my personal trailer that I was going to use as my shot window I removed her vowels from it because I it didn't sit with me however the client um, they're not as savvy as us. They're not worried about it so much as us. And it was probably more important for her to have heard some of her vows. So in, in their trailer, their trailer, I include a bit of her vows. Even though I can't bear to listen to it, they, they never uttered a word about it. They never complained about it. For me, it just was awful. But So it's really difficult. So even if you've got a personal mic, just that tiny little bit more of a distance. So she would have been saying her vows to him, maybe here. And honestly, the sound difference was in, just awful. Because of that proximity. Yeah. So um, what's inside kit bags? You know, what type of microphones do you prefer to use uh, in your everyday uh, working life? Are we Sarah? mine? Oh, go ahead. You go. No, go. You've got this <laughs> too. You've got this. Um, um, I, I use the Sennheiser AVXs. Um, these are great. These are really good for traveling. Um, they're connected wirelessly. And um, the, this is a lav mic, which you can either clip on or you can get under covers, which I prefer because you don't, you don't see the actual clip and the microphone. And you just kind of pop it in, into the clothes. Yes. And, and that's generally just for interviews. And then other than that, I've got the MK440, which is a stereo mic, which I put onto my camera for ambient sound. Um, I probably go from one extreme to another. So I have an omnidirectional mic, so a lav mic, so recording 360. Um, and in situations, say, if I'm recording like in a kitchen and a chef, then that mic picks up everything, but actually I want it to because I want the sound of the mixing and everything else. Um, or then a shotgun mic, which is almost the opposite. So kind of like narrow wherever I put it, I'll capture the audio. But I do have, like I have several kit bags just on audio. Nice. But, and it's, I, you wouldn't just take one lens on a shoot. 
Like it's like you wouldn't go shoot a 200 mil lens to try and do several projects. Like you would have at least two. So they're my two, the love mic um, yeah. and the AVX kit. I, I tried to break it and I haven't yet. Yeah, well. these folks are really good. Really yeah. good. And for yourself? Well, so, I mean, I really don't want to take too much stuff with me. So it, for me, it's about the planning and knowing what I'm going to need at, at, at each event. And especially for weddings, you want layerings of sound. And, and as you said, no, you know, mo, no microphone fits every situation. So I know people that do just take a stack of the same type and think that'll do. And it just won't because you need different microphones to do different things. So I'll obviously always have the um, MKE 400 on the top of my camera um, for the ambient sound. Then I'll have a range of um, recorders. Um, I love this memory mic by Sennheiser. That's absolutely fantastic. You operate it from your phone. Um, I've also got uh, just some recorders with lavia mics. The, I, norm, I tend to put them on the groom. I don't tend to use a lot of radio mics um, because you can't stop an event like a wedding. So if something goes wrong and you lose that, then um, there's nothing you can do. And the only problems that I've ever had with recorders have been human error. Like, there's a lock button on, on them. And I have been known on one occasion to, instead of flick it to lock, but flick it to off. But that's human <laughs> error, you know, and I'll never ever do that again, because I'll always double check, double check. But I have a lot of backups. Um, and I will plug into a sound system, but generally, sweeping statement, generally DJs don't, DJs don't really know what they're doing when it comes to that sort of audio. So even if I do plug in, I'm not going to use uh, that. That will be a backup of a backup of a backup. And when we're talking about backup, sometimes as photographers, we might be thinking about having more than one copy of a file. What we're really talking about is having, is recording in multiple different ways. So sure, you might have, for me, if I'm doing something that might be an interview, I will have a, a lav mic, something that's very close normally positioned somewhere around the chest because of the warmth from the, from the diaphragm. And then I will have another one, um, which is for me my secondary option, which is the shotgun mic. Um, so I will try and run just a couple of options. And of course, I'll have whatever's coming on the, on the camera so that we're covering ourselves as much as possible. What would be great now is because we've got about five, ten more minutes. Has anyone got any questions that we'd like to kind of put to the panel so we can kind of try and zone in on a few of those questions for you? Have we scared you already? Yes, <laughs> microphone's just coming over. Hi. Um, for those of you that record externally, um, obviously um, levels are something that's always eluded a lot of people, um, especially coming from a photography background. What sort of levels do you sort of recommend or use for things like ambient sound, but also for dialogue, so that it blends and you get uh, that tone all the way across so i mean it's, it's a bit like exposure isn't it you can you can um if you've got exposure and you're overexposed there's nothing much you can do about that but if you if you keep your levels a little bit lower than you think that you might need them then you can lift that sound in post so i would always say just be a little um a, just to record a little bit lower um and then you know that you can do something in post because if you over mod there's nothing you can do about that there's no no running away from that just another point there, because I did this really wrong as a photographer too. I was like, I, I heard this, and then I was just like, wait, let's get it really green, really low. And then what I didn't realize is in the edit, when you pull it up, you get all the other oh, junk the noise. noise as well. And I was like, oh. so it, it is that fine line. Um, but I would say really, that's when you want to monitor it and see. And when it starts hitting maybe like orange, I kind of go, okay, put it down a bit. But we, we used to do, a, actually, Vince, you remember, we used to do like a sing song, or Pete did, where we would go, ask the client to sing a song. Um, so we get the different ranges of how they're going to do yes. it. And then I could tell if it's going to peak. And it was funny. It made the client relax in front of us. And we had a giggle. <laughs> if you have a camera as well that has um, two inputs, you can set the, the one mic to go into both. And then... Um, take one of them down so it's actually recording two but you've got you've got a backup or at least set one of them to auto so it doesn't over modulate and then just the one of how you hear it and how you like that one the h6 zoom is really good actually because um it, it has it records and then it also has a backup that records i think it's minus 20 d 12 d, maybe 12 or minus 20 db lower so the backup is actually lower um, and yeah. sometimes i go into the edit and you know when i've been recording the dancing in the evening it might be the backup that i actually end up taking because obviously you've got that on the floor and you're filming you're concentrating i'm a solo shooter so it's really hard to monitor um, the audio at the same time as monitor the pictures so it's a you know you might have started and it might be fine and then you might walk away and it might go up one nice. other thing I would say is 
getting decent headphones makes a huge difference. Trying to use like Apple headphones to listen because like when you get a really good pair of headphones on, you're like, whoa, I can hear that stuff. What's or even like in the test, I'm like, there's that drone noise. I didn't even hear it without my headphones on. You won't. Um, it's interesting because you talked earlier on about what you listen to when you go to an area. Well, I live in in the mountains, and actually the sort of noise I hear a lot of is uh, helicopters and uh, yeah. Um, um, drones, people out with their drones and stuff. Um, and I might be in the middle of an interview and I'm more likely, if I'm interviewing someone, to hear the, even the start of the cable car going or the start of a, a, a helicopter coming over. And I just, I can hear it. Very but if jealous. I haven't... <laughs> just drop that in. Um, if I haven't got my headphones in, it's quite... It's, it, it, you're, you're more distracted. It keeps you focused, doesn't it? Nice. Uh, any other questions? Yes, just at the, towards the back. Keeping you fit, that's good. Run round. So who mics the bride? Well, I work on my own, so I mic the bride. And actually, this is a really interesting question because um, I, I'm sure that guys get much more problems with um, mic micing bridesmaids and, um, and the bride. I don't actually mic a bride, um, but let's say she's doing a speech um, and she wants it, it's it's really important to her for it to be captured. I mean, it's 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 fantastic the, these sort of devices now that you can just pop down the top. But it's much easier for me to do that than anyone else. But also, it's easier for me to take her to the ladies and mic her up um, with a recorder because I'm a woman. So it, I I I do sometimes feel for male videographers that um, have to deal with that. When I worked at the BBC, the funniest thing was, you know, um, cameramen used to come up to me and say, "Right, I'm ready to mic you." I go, it's all right, I'll do it myself. <laughs> so, you know, so it must be much easier for me as a woman to, to, um, to get round those obstacles that, that men must sometimes go, now what am I going to do? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I, I get them to yeah. start the process, feed it through themselves, <laughs> we get and then I just worry about them. We don't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say I've never mind to ride either. Like, yeah. the, the type of weddings I did, like, their dresses were like, hundred grand like there's yeah. no way and they're kind of fitted we're more worried about there's not that many women in the room but you'll get this the back flap thing so we're yeah. more worried about that there is no room to stick anything down there um on different sets we uh unfortunately women will put it literally here it'll be taped to your leg on a film set yeah it's not fun um so but i nice generally would say chances. that if i wanted to get the audio from two people so for like rookie filmmaking instead of having the mic here if I brought it down a little bit lower, then my map now is going to capture both of them. Um, and yeah. then sticking those things in flowers, um, so then kind of in a direction where it's in her direction and they're facing the recipient. Well, so you say sticking these in flowers. I've got this black tape with me. You might be wondering why I'm gripping onto it. I don't go anywhere without this because, um, you know, I might even... Um, dangle a uh, lavia mic on a speaker, something I used to learn from BBC cameramen. Um, so this is amazing like if i've got um a handheld mic i might even take one of these to it there's one of my backups right so we've got the handheld mic and then we've got the backup so um i don't go anywhere without my my these are tape. cool too because they're magnetic you just got to remember oh, when yeah. you left it yes that's the only thing but you can stick it in places <laughs> that you've got audio that you don't know magnetic but you get home and go oh where did i leave my mic i mean i i used something that was similar um when i used to do weddings a number of years ago the one time that I, someone tried to sue me was when during the speeches, um, one of my team members didn't press record uh, during the speech. So when we got back to the edit, we had lots of small clips for the, the cutaways, which is what we used in like the montage and the main edit. And then we had the audio. We put together the video and then two years later, the bride called up and said, oh, do you have the long version of the, uh, of the, of the speech? And I said, um, yeah, uh, let me just check. And I checked and I realized that we didn't have the main video file. They couldn't sue me because legally we had captured the speeches. We had the visuals, but I had recorded the audio and the audio was excellent. Um, so we were totally covered. And that was a case where for me, the audio was more important because had I got video without audio I would have then them. been liable yeah. yes uh, do yeah. we have time for one more yeah yes young man how is he uh, what what's the best software to sync to sync your audio 
Can I, can I do this? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a funny story. I, I used a Final Cut 10, and um, a while back, someone said to me, why don't you use Pluralize? It's really, really good. So I said, thanks. I got the link. They gave me a code, got a discount code. And I thought, oh, I'm way too busy to start learning something else. I'm really, really too busy. So for about a year, this software sat on, sat on, my, on my iMac, and I didn't do anything about it. And then one day I thought, you know what? I've got a bit of time. I'll try this. And I went, oh my God, I have literally lost hours of my life waiting for audio to sync up in Final Cut when I could have been using Pluralize. I would be able to set them it to multicam and I'd walk out the room, come back, still wasn't done, walk out that room, come back. And when I got Pluralize, you'd press sync and you'd go to leave the room. And as you were leaving, it's syncing as, and you don't even have time for a cup of a cup of tea and the other great thing is if you're recording on lots of different audio devices sometimes there's drift and you don't want to have to keep matching up that sound over and over again and Plur pluralize has the option to correct that audio drift so it really is a miracle and it's one of the things i always say to people it's my favorite plugin is pluralize yes i'm just going to jump in because I, I came from a totally different opposite i was like proper rookie we didn't have cash when we were learning how to do all this. And I don't know how much cash Dad's going to give you, right? <laughs> so maybe use the cash for a microphone. Um, and good old-fashioned way, clapping. And you know what? It's so crazy. If I do a two-camera edit now, I still manually put it together. And I still do that if I'm yeah, editing it. Because I can do it quicker than running the software. But, um, but yeah, good old, use the budget for a microphone. Do you know that's There's some nice ones over there. That's really, really good <laughs> advice because I did a wedding at Dijon Cathedral and I had two cameras at the back and the audio from the camera wasn't um, able to be picked up. So when I went into Pluralize, I still had two camera angles at the back to sync and I didn't clap. And I, I actually probably recalled every 15 minutes, 20 minutes on a, my DSLR because I don't like... I don't like a file to go wrong or, or on something that's important like that, so I never go up to the limit of a half an hour. So um, actually, every time I should have just done something that would have helped me. Um, so because obviously, when you've got a great big venue, you can't always sync up the audio. I literally just use Final Cut. Okay. I think it's just amazing, and I think it syncs it really well. And I don't, ha I don't have the troubles of waiting so long. I don't know why you've had troubles of waiting so long, but. Probably because you have a lot of a lot more. Footage. Sometimes I might have eight or nine tracks, um, yeah. but and some of the sound is not as good on the other tracks because it's just from the onboard camera. So that's why I think Pluralize just seems a lot more. Se um, have you tried Pluralize? No, I've not tried it yet. Try it and then let's have a conversation. If you've got two, <laughs> if you've got a number of really good audio feeds, then it matches very things match up very easily. Yeah. But when you've got um, a microphone that's got a lot of ambient. Uh, i.e. background noise that you're trying to collect and then you've got something that's very close to the, to the voice that's where it sometimes gets harder or if you've been pressing record stop, start, yeah. stop, start during the course of say an event then what you end up having is one big long audio file because maybe you recorded it on an external device and then lots of small little files and you can't be going all right next one well, you uh, do. next one not for weddings oh, no. we okay. don't no. go for it but oh, i mean okay. as in if oh, i need God, to takes forever. i so, need to film an edit in less yeah. than a day or a same day edit then yeah, I'll, yeah. i think that's all, all we have time for um, but uh, i think it's been Really great to listen to your tips, your advice, and your war stories. Um, it's also fantastic, actually. I'm sure you'd agree to have a, an all-female uh, panel as well uh, of talent. So please give them a round of applause. And we haven't mentioned cats. Oh, we, no. we missed the cat questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Simeon, Emma, Sarah, and Vicky, for a great discussion there. Um, I hope that you gain something from it, whether you are um, a, a professional looking to up your game and offer some better audio. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your support and thank you for your kind words so far. Um, there will be more and I'm really excited about the future um, of the Aspect Ratio podcast. If you do have any, um, if, if you have any comments or critique, please let us know. Uh, it's great to hear feedback, good and bad. And um, without the feedback, we can't get better. And without the, you, we don't have an audience, obviously. So we do really appreciate comments. And don't forget to subscribe so you get all the podcasts as soon as they're released into your player of choice. Thank you so much. 
It's been lovely having you here, and we'll see you next time on the Aspect Ratio podcast. Goodbye. You've been listening to Aspect Ratio, the photography and video podcast.